Hey, we're Take Me to the Pilot, and you're watching Basement Entertainment. Hey, this is Amy from Basement Entertainment, and I'm here with Take Me to the Pilot. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Good. We are yes. great. Very good. Good. So, the name Take Me to the Pilot is actually the title of an Elton John song. So, was his song the inspiration for the band name, or how did it come about? It was random. It, um, it was just something that popped out one day and it stuck. I mean, it's it's definitely. I, I mean, I mean, it's it's not like I I didn't know that there would be that connection drawn because I'm a huge Elton John fan. We have his entire his entire discography on vinyl in our basement back home. But it was it was never something where you know that like that song was the inspiration for the band. It's just a happy coincidence. Okay, so in your band biography on Facebook, it states that "Take Me to the Pilot" essentially started from a solo acoustic project that you did back in early 2009. So, how did the solo project lead into the band? Well, the thing is, is that it, 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 that's true. It's not. It, I wouldn't necessarily call it a solo project. I mean, it, it it sort of was that in the sense that I was kind of playing these songs by myself and performing by myself. But it was never meant to be the Mike Belenke show in that sense. It was all. It was. It was essentially that I, I wanted a band. I wanted to start another band. But p prior experiences had taught me that you know if you don't find the right people, that if you rush into it, that eventually. Yeah, you, yeah. If you don't, if you don't find the right people, like John here, um, and you rush into it, that basically eventually everything just implodes. So I, I you know, I, I had these songs that I was really excited about and wanted to, you know, get out of my basement and onto the stage. But by the same token, I didn't want to, you know, just in, like put together a band like Bing Bang Boom and then, you know, have it fall apart around me. So it was just something where, you know, it was essentially meant to be a band all along, and then just we all came together over the course of playing shows and getting word out around town about us. Okay, so fan question number one is from Robin in Brantford, Ontario. And our question is, were you guys all friends before starting the band? We're not friends now. <laughs> <laughs> but were we friends before is a question. That's yeah, that's we, used to, yeah we, we were friends up until the point when the band started and then <laughs> everything deteriorated. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, um, <laughs> bad jokes aside, uh, Adam and I knew each other from playing in, in two different bands around Lockport, Manitoba when we were young. Yeah, when we were in middle school. Yeah, and uh, and and then we kind of like it was, it was water polo that like we kind of like ran into each other. Playing well, we water were polo. we were re reminded of each other's existence. I think at that point. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, we hadn't spoken in a while, and then uh, and then Eric. Well, Eric, you you. There, what was it like? A, did we post an ad or did we just say, no, "Hey, I, yeah, people, I saw you play online. and I liked it, and I looked at the MySpace and you said there was a, like a call out for a guitar player." Mm -hmm. It was months expired, and I figured I'd never hear anything from you guys again. And then out of the blue, one day you just kind of called me up at night, and you're just like, "Hey, I want you out for the band." And I was like, "Sure." <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> That's sort of how Adam got his call too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> except it was very, very early in the morning instead. And I had been drinking, <laughs> and he proceeded to tell me how he climbed a statue, and that he wanted me to be in his band, and he's like, dude, join my band. And I was like, it's like 3 a.m. I'm still on the statue. <laughs> join my band. I climbed a statue. You gotta join my band. <laughs> That's it. It's as good a pitch as I've ever given, really. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been way more too if you're on a statue. And then, yeah. But I went for it anyways. Uh, and then John, well, John isn't our original drummer, he's actually our third drummer, but he he came to our attention, uh, our merch guy who's over there, Ryan, uh, is friends with him, and uh, we needed somebody to tour with us originally, just as a touring drummer, so he recommended John, and John came out, and he and was got stuck. And then, and then we were just, we got our claws into him, and he was like, can I go now? And we were like, no, and uh, he's still here, I haven't seen my family since. Help. He's, wearing, won't see this he's wearing one of those electric dog collars that shock you if you're bad around his... It's around his knee so that you can't see it? Yes. It's the other way it hurts. Yeah. Yes. Shock we also hit him with phone books. Yes. No bruises. Okay. <laughs> and bags of oranges. <laughs> and bags of oranges. Okay, so... Going back to your band biography on Facebook, it says, Good things come to those who wait. Patience is a virtue. Success is a journey, not a destination. What a load of crap. What does this quote mean to you guys? That it's a little crap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta go for it. If you don't, if you sit around and wait, nothing's gonna happen. You yep. gotta go after it. Seize the day. All that kind of thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. That was so man. I feel like. Yep. That was really inspirational, Eric. 
I feel like I want to be somebody now. <laughs> if I could cry, I would. If, had I not already wept at the sunrise this morning, <laughs> yes. I would be weeping right now. <laughs> okay, so is it hard being a band from Winnipeg, Manitoba? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, oh, you want more? Well, yeah. like, <laughs> oh, details. Okay. Well, I mean, the th the one thing about being a band from Winnipeg, Manitoba, like, like, for, like, the bands that live kind of in the GTA here are all very lucky in the sense that they can go on tour and never actually be more than like two or three hours away from their their house. If we go on tour, the first stop in any given really given direction, east or west, is seven to eight hours. What a lot of people from this part of Canada realize is that it costs about nine hundred dollars just for a band like us to get here. So we have to have that money together from our previous tour. We have to make enough money while we're here to get home. So unfortunately, it's not a two-hour drive or you just sleep at your house every night like some bands get to do, which uh, would be great. But oh, the one th the one thing that is nice though is like if you're a band, like because I mean, really, on the one hand, it sucks being like you know, if like depending on where you start your tour, right? If you started out west or out east, I mean, the one nice thing about being in the middle of Canada is like. You know that that first drive is all is no matter what going to be half the country as opposed yeah. to say someone from Ontario is like oh tour starts in BC and they're going just on and on and on you know yeah so there is that but I mean but it, there is there are difficulties like I mean there's 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 not really a whole lot music industry related going on in Winnipeg and when I say not a whole lot I mean it's absolutely yeah. zero <laughs> not at all. so I mean that's why like, we've we've been in Toronto for or in, around Toronto for a while now like a couple weeks just doing that type of stuff and as frustrating as some of the time off has been it's been it's been good because we've been able to take meetings and like see people that we don't normally get to so okay so you guys released your self-titled EP back in August 2010 so since it's basically a year and a half old can we expect some new tunes yes this I've <coughs> I've been in locked in sessions on all of our days off with, the, with a ton of different people um, and as soon as we as soon as we go home the f like the first thing that I'm going to do is go into the studio uh, we we're shooting for a summer release, early summer, so. Good. Summer release. <laughs> yeah. Take, yeah, like. But we have a couple songs already, but it's just, you can't really make an EP with three songs. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you're, you have to you're finish gonna, that up. Expect something new very soon. That's our next, before we before we tour again, that's the big thing, is we need to have new material out, it's yeah. been forever. Cool. So you guys are obviously becoming more and more popular all the time. What? And you've had your song, Ooh. it's true. <laughs> you've what? had your song to tonight on Degrassi, and you've also been on YTV. This is all news to me. <laughs> you were there for all of it. John talks in his sleep. This is. <laughs> Are you sleeping right now, John? Yeah, I sleep <laughs> all the time. Okay, so because of this, what's it feel like as a band to reach these points in your career? It's cool. It's it's neat to, you know, it's one thing to like, especially when you're telling you know your family and friends, you know, like about what you're doing. It's one thing to say like, oh yeah, you know, like we're playing the local coffee shop. It's another thing to be like, yeah, we were actually on YTV. Yeah. <laughs> or we're on a TV show that's aired. Oh yeah, like a, like a TV we, show. We've got fans in the states. People saw us in Australia. Uh, it's just like it's kind of cool that like you can say that we've accomplished something. Like it's not just hot air. You know, it's just something we've actually done. Actually, a couple of days ago, we got an email saying that our video was played on Much Music. So that was kind of cool. We did. So. News to us. We did. Yeah, we had no idea. idea. So, no. Feel free to. We thought they. Had, we thought they had passed on it, and then all of a sudden, our manager is like, "Yeah, your media base report says you got like a bunch of plays this week." <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, "Okay, okay." Well, we right. didn't know. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's pride. It's cool. It means it means you're going somewhere, and it's a sign of progress, and that's what it's all about: is baby steps. So. Okay, we've got another fan question from Bailey in Cambridge, Ontario. Nice Hi, Bailey. This question, one's for you. <laughs> his question is, what was it like shooting the Tonight music video? It's really warm, Bailey. See, those, what, Bailey, what you don't get, Bailey, <laughs> is that those lights, I mean, each of those bulbs around us were putting out, what was it, like 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 watts? 100 watts. That's warm. We were basically, the, the music video was basically shot it's in an easy warm. bake oven, Bailey. An but, easy but there was nothing oven. easy about it. There's nothing easy, and there were no delicious treats afterwards, and... Uh, anything else that you want to add um, to Bailey? Bailey, I, I would have to say that the temperature in the room was above lukewarm and the Humidex was much higher than normal. Because I was, it's, I, I, I was the Humidex. Yeah, he was, he was. personally um, <laughs> moist. Yeah, adding much moisture into the air and it, was, it made it uncomfortable for everyone in the building it was at that time. Including the people outside the building. Yes. There was, there's, a lot of, with there's a lot of wood in that building, it all warped. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, they had, had to apply much new lacquer. They've had that place for like, actually, <laughs> lacquer. <laughs> 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 
So Bailey, I hope you enjoyed the video because yeah. that church isn't there anymore. <laughs> that was the hundredth anniversary th that year, and yeah. that's it. Hundred cut off. Yeah, we're actually we're actually touring to pay off the insurance debts. <laughs> The, uh, the the fire department yeah. came one time because we had a Boy. fog machine. To, no, oh, no, Leon didn't kill Okay, we had a we had a fog machine, and apparently the smoke alarms in there, just the way they were set up, there was like, uh, it wasn't actually. I don't know. Basically, they, we set up smoke alarms, so we set them off twice, and like the fire trucks and stuff came, and we a were lot just of like, fire trucks came. we're just like, hey guys, we're shooting a music video. There's this no, doesn't no cost us because you came, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. There was no smoke alarms. The steam emitting from my body was actually visible for six blocks, yeah. and that's what attracted the fire department. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yuck. Hope you enjoyed that answer, Bailey. <laughs> Bye, Bailey. Bye, Bailey. Bye. Hi, Bailey. Okay, sorry. Back to you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so you kind of answered the next question, but did anything bad happen during the filming? Well, yeah, I mean, like, see our previous answer. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Next question, please. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was really it. Like, we didn't actually get harmed by those light bulbs despite them being as hot as miniature suns. One um, broke, though. Yeah, Only but one. but it didn't, like, break I, and shatter, though. It's I, just, like, I, yeah, I kind of I bent my leg like I was just standing. I kind of like bent my leg back to like, take a step, and it I just tapped it and it was gone like instantly. But we were prepared for it. We were. I had a nice um, little path that I could like walk back and forth, and I like before did. we start we started. I just like wa I just paced around in my little area just to make sure that I could move without looking and hit not hitting any light bulbs. <laughs> oh yeah, the the only thing was um I had a little bit of guitar issue because we're jumping around so much. Yeah. The strap. Like the buttons on my guitar, they hold the strap there, just ripped out of the guitar. So I had to put like new huge screws into the guitar and like basically grind them right into the guitar to make sure they stay there. Fun fact that happened to my bass on our last music video shoot. It's a curse. Next. next. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Where your drums are <laughs> just sort of yeah, exploding. Yeah. yeah. No, what else, what else happened? I think that well, was the, well, the one thing that. The that lights worked. Well, no, there, there was one thing. That, like, it was like the fact that. Because we, we, we had some really good folks from, from MC College um, in Winnipeg come to do like hair and makeup for us. But I, they, it, it wasn't bad so much as just kind of funny and ironic because like, you know, they, they got us all dolled up and we, you know, we, we were looking our best and then we started shooting, right, in, in this really, really warm room. And like, we're not kidding. Like, I mean, I in particular got like super sweaty. But then like, as we started shooting, like right when we would start to, you know, need touch-ups, they were like, all right, bye. And they took off. <laughs> So we so they did a great job. No, they they yes. did though. I mean, yeah, like there's no 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 disrespect intended. It was just the, the, bit of the best irony. makeup I've ever had. The best, <laughs> and that's saying something. Yeah. That's saying something because John is normally always in full drag. Mm -hmm. Yuck! He changed before this interview. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you guys have toured with some pretty big names like Fifi Dobson and these kids who are crowns. So has another artist or band ever pranked you guys, or have you ever pranked them? We've well, okay. The only time that we've ever really been pranked was at the end of our tour with Brighter Brightest, when we were playing oh. the last song on our set, which is called the Car. Uh, uh, rags, my rags, my riches. My drums um, just started disappearing. Yeah, I yeah. Like, I was just playing, and then one was gone, and that was gone. Yeah, they, everything was just gone. I was singing at the front of the stage, and I'm hearing John, and I'm going, "What the hell is he doing?" Yeah, like, I'm just listening. He like, sounds terrible. This like, is a really like, off night. Why are you playing that? Yeah, cats? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, Turn yeah, around. Yeah, I'm thinking like. Like, like, what, did you drop a stick? Like, come on, buddy, get it together, pick it up and move on. And then drop I turn around stuff. and he's got, like, a bass drum, a hi-hat, and a puzzled expression. <laughs> he's like, he's just going, I don't know what happened. Yeah, very, very <laughs> They're all gone. Yeah. <laughs> but then we got him back uh, because we filled their murdered them. Pallets. Yes, they are all dead. They're all dead now. No. Um, <laughs> you don't mess with us. No, uh, we Next well, question. We, it was it was it was it was a it was a it was a two part prank where they, they parked their van and trailer in a very like narrow alleyway. So we un so like while they were on stage they, they all like you know they left their keys off stage. So no, we grabbed no, no, one. No, no, no. What happened was uh, Ryan's keys were on his belt we were drumming. And I can't remember I mean, it was you or me. I got, just, no, I got yeah, it. Was it you, they snuck up on you like actually keys. pulled them off. Sorry. Somewhere. Because I recall actually getting them off of his. Uh, no, maybe I just took them from another night. No, it was it was definitely Kyle's keys that we took. Somebody left the keys out. Bad, Point being, bad keys, call. keys were taken. The van was entered, and then we unhooked the van from the trailer and actually turned like in in the alleyway and turned like again very narrow. Turned it around so it was facing the trailer hitch. So basically, the van did a complete 180, and then we opened up their trailer and there were a bunch of these big wooden pallets in the back, and we filled their trailer with pallets. It was, uh, that was a good prank. What yeah, else that's did to we say do? Kyle got really upset. Well, no, Ky Kyle, <laughs> Kyle had the best strategy because he came out and the way he explained it to me was, listen, I knew two things. One, no one, like, unless someone got mad, 
I was gonna have to be the one, like, he would have to be the one cleaning up the trailer. The second thing he knew was that he was not going to be the one cleaning up the trailer, so he got really mad. Like, he He's put, on, fit. put on a very good show and guilted us into cleaning up the trailer ourselves. And now he's dead. And now he's dead. Yeah, yeah. we just killed them all, so. Just, yeah, then we killed them. It doesn't matter. Okay. So you guys have a song titled, I Was Alive for 15 Days in the 80s. From that name, if you could go back into the 80s, what's the one fashion trend you would bring back? From the 80s? Can't you see it? <laughs> see what I did there? I'm waiting for you to explain the joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely not the mullet. He's asleep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Actually, no. We've already heard. Can can we can we bring him on? This is our. Come here. Come here, Ryan. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You grew it. Deal with the consequences. Come here. This is our merch guy, Ryan. Say hi, Ryan. Um, as you can see, is actually rocking one fashion trend from the '80s: a glorious mullet. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That and um, I feel like parachute pants simply because is they that, seem to be comfy. Is that is that is that that's eighties? The mullet mullet is, is it? No, 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 parachute pants. Oh, dude, yeah. I don't know anything from the eighties, so I'm gonna go like parachute, parachute pants, pants and nineties. Um, no, I think like eight, late eighties, early nineties. I feel like all the cool stuff people brought back anyway, so <laughs> I don't know. Leggings, I don't know. We'll let that let that go. Let that one go. Hair metal. I love. Yeah. I love hair metal. Trucker. No, trucker no, hats the with the beak track. flipped up and something written on it. Just, just, it's just track. rude. It's awesome. The hair from hair metal. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's that's that was before my time. So you know, and I was only alive for 15 days in the 80s. So I don't know. It's not just a clever title. It's not just a clever title. That's actually true. Cool. Okay, so you guys are obviously not only incredibly nice guys, but. You seem to be pretty goofy. <laughs> Which no. We saw. We've been um, on the road a long time. We're a little wired. We need to let it out somehow. Yeah. It's the shouting true. matches get boring. Because <laughs> <laughs> Mike wins. Okay, so you guys filmed a little YouTube video to promote your show at Sneaky D. This was at the beginning of March, and it was a pretty unique video. We were in a blanket fort. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. It went, from like, it went from us having a presentation, just like, you know what, let's have a fort instead. Yeah, we, well, the first idea was, like, it, there's, there, there was the gag in Wayne's World, where, like, they're standing in front, like, the first Wayne's World movie, where they stand in front of a green screen, and they're like, oh, we can get magically transported to anywhere in the world, and I guess the joke is, like, you know, like, oh, we're in Hawaii, and, like, oh, let's go to Alua or whatever, oh, we're in New York, I'm gonna catch a Broadway show, and then it flashes, like, oh, I'm in Delaware. Hi. <laughs> I mean, so we're gonna Delaware. do something like that, and then yeah. didn't work. Didn't didn't work, and then we well, we spent. That was when we like we went on a the show Community we all love, and we we'd watch like the first in two seasons of it over the course of like just two days, and uh, there was a blanket fort episode, so we decided we would make a blanket fort. She didn't even ask a question. She just started talking about it. Oh, is it? I don't know. <laughs> is that the? Are we, are well, we I, feel, the I feel like she wanted us to expand on it though. Yeah. Is that where you're going? Okay, good. I wasn't sure. There's more of a... Uh, <laughs> well, well, okay, no, finish the, finish the question. <laughs> well, too bad. Next question. Dude, 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 she wrote, she wrote it down and everything. Continue the question. Okay. I feel really bad now. <laughs> I just like saying this. trying to do my part. Okay, what's one thing about each of you guys that fans wouldn't expect? <laughs> that we like blanket The forts? smell. <laughs> no, the collective smell. I feel like there isn't much to hide because the only things I like are food and poutine. And he has a shirt that says. Believe it or not, those are separate. Things. Yeah, those yeah, are separate, separate things. things. Yeah, poutine's actually not food. Yeah, it's just very delicious. We're so it's like, I don't know. It's a because, because of yeah. yeah, because of the interwebs. I think it's hard to hide things. We're pretty open about everything too. We're not like very. I don't know. We don't shield ourselves from He's people. Got if you ask, I think it would question. surprise people to know that I'm a huge UFC fan. Nobody like whenever people find that out about me, it seems like they don't like they don't really expect it. They kind of go, oh, and I get weird looks when like I go out to like bars and stuff to watch like yeah. to watch the events, and people kind of go like, what's he here for? He's like, not wearing <laughs> any affliction. Yeah, yeah, and I see <laughs> no tribal yeah. uh, art on him. That's not a tablet logo. That is a microphone. <laughs> mm -mm. Wrong place, buddy. Because he has like one of the microphones that the announcer uses. No nah, man, Bruce Buffer. Bruce, Bu Bruce Buffer just uses a regular old. The fact that you know the guy's name, this, that's enough right there. That's thank you, dude. He makes like so much money, and all he does is say people's names. <laughs> Adam Brown, fifty bucks, right there. That's basically what he does, it's but more money. than fifty bucks. Yeah, I could get on board with that. Anyways, <laughs> so it's clear, clear you guys have a pretty massive fan base, and I was watching a YouTube video highlighting a past tour when Adam made a comment. 
when you guys were in Hamilton, which is 22 hours away from where you guys are from. Is that the one where he cried? Oh yeah, the one. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know oh, what? The only emotion he's ever well, shown. Once again, she hasn't finished asking the question. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay, so Adam says the kids here were singing along to Green Eyes tonight, which blows our minds because we've only been on tour, been on tour for not even a year, and we've already come this far. So obviously, it's a pretty incredible feeling. But what's it, like? What goes through your head? Can you demonstrate the crying he was doing as well? <laughs> there was no crying going on. <laughs> you know what? Is, no, you were crying! He's got this one. It was, yeah, the way it was edited, like, putting, like, putting green eyes after it and, like, fading off into, like, oh, yeah, out, of focus, out of focus, yeah. like, street lights and stuff. It was, it, it, you know what? It was very creative editing. I will give him that. Um, I don't so remember what the question is anymore. Because <laughs> you're still upset about that. The moment. question was, do you often cry after shows? <laughs> Every show. <laughs> No, it, <laughs> it's cool. It's it's really neat because it's something that we usually only get in Winnipeg, as as you said in the video between sobs. Um, <laughs> no, um, but, no, it's it, it's really sick because that's I mean that that's like you know and, like anybody will, you know go to a show and they'll stand there kind of like this and they'll watch and stuff like that. But like you can sort of tell that you've turned a corner when you start going to shows and people are actually there and they're actually having a good time and they're not worried about who's watching me or whatever. And when they sing along to a song, that's just the ultimate compliment. Like the ultimate compliment. So it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so in another tour video you guys have on po posted on YouTube, you get stuck on a road because of a plane crash. <laughs> so, oh what other odd things have happened to you while on tour? Um, Tire explode. Sorry, our axle a, exploded. Yeah, we had we to replace the axle. Poop on our van? Yeah, monkeys, monkeys <laughs> invaded our van. Um, and pooped on it, yeah. And pooped on it. Um, what else? We went. <laughs> There was this one time we went to the, the dinosaur museum in Drumheller, and you know all of us kind of went on a you know we could, like started walking through the museum and partway through we're going like where, where's Eric because Eric loves dinosaurs and we kind of go where's where's Eric at and we kind of so like we go through the museum we do the whole thing we come up to the gift shop and there's Eric I'm like what's up man's like where have you guys been I just went on three tours and rocked through on myself twice like he just <laughs> that, was, that is over and we were and we were just like we didn't even see you. I went <laughs> through twice. I went through on a guided tour once and once by myself. I didn't go through five times in the and time. We climbed yet. those hills just outside of Drum Hiller too, and like each of us like kind of got stuck on top of them. We're just like, all right, now how do we get down? <laughs> there was the time when you went in the mountains and didn't know what to do with yourself. Or we climbed a waterfall. And you like like, like the first time driving through the mountains. Oh man, he couldn't handle it. He's like, he had oh, never seen mountains there. before. He'd never seen mountains before, and he's just going like. I I just want to be a mountain. I just want to get that footage together and my, actually edit this. Actually, my, my favorite thing from this last tour, when we were, in, uh, we were in BC, we were coming through the mountains, and we saw the sign that says mountain goats. We're like, you never see mountain goats. And it's like, we drive another 10 feet, there's a mountain goat standing right next right, to us. Right, but like, what? So then he's like, yeah, you asked for it. Um, right. One time we got held up in the mountains because they were like shooting gigantic cannonballs at the mountains to like cause like, yeah. avalanches, yeah. so that way... Like if it was, a, it's, it's it's a controlled avalanche. Right? Yeah, they just made so that way you know, the snow didn't fall on its own and just like take out like cars and shit. So. Well, there was a time on this tour where I was on, I was in our van on the phone. Like we we, we drove into Toronto to see some friends play, um, and, like for CMW, and uh, it's happened like two days ago. And I was in the phone. I, I was I was I was in the phone on the van. <laughs> yes. And while I was in the phone on the van. Somewhat like these, this this really drunk dude walked by the van and actually like threw like two really hard punches at it. <laughs> so I got out of the van and followed him down the street. <laughs> yeah, like he I'm was I was really yeah. mad. That wasn't a good story. That's just he did so not was, take the machete. Uh, yeah, we have a machete in our van, <laughs> and, and I didn't it. take it. So, yeah, you go on tour, things are gonna happen. It starts getting darker. Oh, dude! At the time we walked through the neighborhood, <laughs> well, you know who was with who was with us? I think you were alone. <laughs> Probably. I, I am the gay neighborhood apparently. <laughs> Pride Rock. No, no, yeah, we were we were we were staying with a friend in Vancouver, and we were walking through. I guess it was like, it was like I guess like the gay district, I suppose. And like we walked past this one club, and as we were walking by, this dude just said, uh, "Welcome to the gay neighborhood." And then we had like a ten minute argument over. No, he was talking to you. No, he was talking to you. So. And if it was, was just good. you by yourself, it was probably just you. Yeah, it was me by myself, and I actually shouted it to passersby. <laughs> to say it to you, huh? Moving on. Okay, we have another fan question from Brian in Hamilton, Ontario. Hey Brian, this one's for you. And his question is, at this point in your careers, if you could choose another band to open for you guys, who would you choose? To open for us? Yeah. Or to play the most fun. Brian, can I call you Bri? Yeah, Bri, Bri guy? <laughs> Bri guy. How about bro? Uh, what, bro you want to open bro. for us? To open for That's interesting. I've never, like, 
I've never thought of that. It's a difficult question because it, like... Is this one of these things where we can just name big bands? Or is this a thing where we... Is there do, rules? We would give a band that would actually make sense. I'd feel weird about saying like a band that we'd want to open for us because that's implying that, that we're like... We're like a, you know, that we're, that we're ahead of them. Like I don't... Yeah, because the question did say it like as where we are in so, our career. Who, how... Pr- who do you think we are, Brian? You don't know us that well. Uh, so we're <laughs> yeah, going Brian. to twist your words now and answer the question in a different way. Adam, would you like to start? It's um, um, I think it's the, <laughs> the, the go-to answer usually would be um, U2. We'd like to have U2 open, open for, for us. us. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're a good up-and-coming band, you know? I feel like they could bring a couple kids you out. Know, I you know, feel like we, could, almost, we could show them the ropes. They're almost ready to break it and just make it in, in music. So. And we'd love to give them that opportunity. I just, you know, yeah, I I just think want to play nice, with Brandis Trench, because that'd be great. Yeah, because they're awesome and they, that's like our our. I feel like they're more really. developed than you two, though. We, yeah. I just want to help you two out. They're really good at singing harmonies. I would like to play with, with the, the Dangerous, dangerous Summer, <laughs> who are currently on tour in Canada right I now. Oh, we had a thing going on there. I thought I thought what well, the bare naked your sentence there with the bare naked. Okay, ladies. okay, let's try this again. Okay, ready? Okay. I would like to play with the bare naked ladies. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know. Look at that. What do I say? Nothing, and I would, nothing, like to, nothing, and I would like to play with them because nothing. they are great. <laughs> it's uncanny. <laughs> All right, next question. So, yeah, so, so, br- br- who would you like to see us open for? Take All two. Right. Take two. Brian, who would you like to see open for us? You take two. <laughs> Twitter us we'll at TMTTP. Leave the entire thing in there. Don't use that. Take two. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Don't do drugs and stay in school. <laughs> Don't. Qu- yeah, that's good. All right. All right. I almost made a Breaking Bad joke, but the character's name is in fact we'll well, the you actor's go. name is Brian. It's your turn. <laughs> yeah, sorry. They so, shot us off. One big reason you guys are here is because you're playing Waterloo tonight. Mm-hmm. So oh, for someone too. who hasn't seen you live, what can they expect? Awesome party. Sweat. That's you. Sweat. Also, glory. Maybe watch out because I've a couple times on this tour I've hit people with my guitar <laughs> without meaning to. I smoked a girl in Ottawa once, I've and if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I learned from just your your styling on stage to literally keep like a five foot barrier from you at all times because you just you are dangerous. you're insane on stage. It's frightening. I'm insane. The best compliment I've ever gotten in my life was on this tour. Our friend Ryan told me when I came off stage, dude, it looked like you were on coke up there. And I thought that was awesome. <laughs> so, expect your drugs. Yeah, but oh, I wasn't actually. I wasn't. I was. I had done meth, <laughs> and you know, it was cheaper. What can I, I say? A- you know, I got that, a deal. <laughs> and after that, he said, "Well, you have a face for radio." <laughs> Wait, what? Kids can expect <laughs> post-industrial sludge with sub-pop tendencies. Can we, can we take that out? <laughs> was, can we take Adam out? <laughs> what kind of word is sludge? I don't want that in our music. I don't even know what kind of music sludge would imply. It's yucky. I don't like it. People can expect it. It's just a good time. We like to have fun. Yeah. And we like to make sure that everyone there has fun. fun. We like to make sure everyone there has fun. It's without the help of meth. Party. Or cocaine. <laughs> or anything. Because if that's how you have to listen to our music, that makes us sad. Why does this always happen in interviews? Because <laughs> <laughs> you put five, you put us all on the couch and just let us talk, and that's the worst idea. We're, we're ready for the next one now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what are you guys up to for the rest of the year? And can we expect more touring later on? Well, yes. yeah, yes. studio, studio, when we get home, and then <laughs> so straightforward. Road. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we're all, always, always more touring, always. Less jokes. Less no. jokes. No. <laughs> Let's the the interviews are gonna get longer and longer, and we're just gonna yeah. have more dumb stuff to say. So, um, I'll prepare material next time. That's it's gonna be great. Not gonna be great. We're yeah, we're working on new CD. We're definitely gonna be back out touring again, hopefully very soon. Um, I don't know. Just keep an eye on us. See what you can. It'll it'll. What is this? See end of clap. This is gonna be. You can expect a lot from us. Thank you for coming, and I can't wait to see you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> That'll be fun. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, you. Yes. thank you very thank you much for having us and for it's your patience. It's more of an apology. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're sorry. sorry. <laughs> we're sorry you just interviewed yeah, us. We're sorry, sorry to you. Sorry to you guys. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Sorry, Brian. And who are the other two? Bailey. Bailey. And sorry, Robin. Bailey. And who? Robin. Robin. Hey, Robin. Sorry. Sorry, guys. We'll do better next time. He'll do better next time. Probably not. <laughs>